Hello and welcome to Shop Talk, episode number two with Jim and Ken. I'm Jim. I'm Ken. Yes, hello. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I've got a couple more topics we're going to talk to you about today. I'm going to talk to you about antenna alignment and setting all those parameters on the radios in our tech talk. And Ken, what do you got for us today? Yeah, I have something kind of different today to talk about. This has been a topic that's been going on for a while for me, but it, it yeah. kind of hit home just earlier this week. It has to do with how radio propagation is uh, defined, how it's done scientifically, and what the different methods are that are out there available uh, from different tools. And a lot of people are familiar with path loss and, and tools like that, and they might be using vendor supplied um, tools for doing path analysis. And uh, that's all well and good. And we put a lot of effort into our online design tool to do that and to effectively mimic, if you will, the type of experience you would get with path loss, but in a more graphic and our user environment. One of the decisions we've had to make, I'll go ahead and switch my screen here real quick and show you. Uh, one of the, the decisions that we've had to make is to decide um, exactly which propagation method to use. And if you open a project, I've already started this project. This was one I was working on earlier um, this week uh, out uh, near Lake Michigan. And this customer wanted to evaluate an 80 gigahertz radio over a, a roughly two 2.2 mile link or so. If you don't do anything to our tool, but just use the defaults, what you'll find is that we default to something that's called Vigant's Barnett, uh, which is a uh, an older uh, propagation method um, that was invented, I think in the early 60s by some guys at Bell Labs. And they had done some studies of propagation as to uh, temperature variations and climate variations and things that would affect ducting and uh, rainfall effects on different frequencies and things like that. And they came up with all this fancy math to do uh, radio propagation. And we've been pretty much hanging on to that for, for decades. Later on in the 90s or so, if I'm not correct, there was a new standard that was developed by the International Telecommunications Union, ITU, called 530, and uh, specifically P.530 that you see here. And that is a standard that was put out uh, later that also is the same idea, but it's using some different variables essentially. And so you have basically radio companies or depending on the user choosing between these two standards, we default to Vigance Barnett. And that's what's important to understand here, but I wanna show you what the difference is. If we ran this path with ITU um, 530, what you see in this path is that the results show us that this path is going to have an outage of uh, outage uh, um, prediction of about 52 minutes and 37 seconds. That's a good number to remember. Another number to remember is instead of running at full speed, it's uh, except for seven hours or seven you know, seven hours, 41 minutes. So if we can kind of try to memorize those numbers, which is seven hours, 41 minutes and 52 minutes. If we change this back to the way that we default our system and that being the um, by against our net method, if I choose auto loading, it basically does that, it defaults that for our ANC settings. And if we go back there and we do a recalculation, if I do this, uh, I think if this, if I hit all the buttons correctly, we'll make sure it did it correctly. Now you see that this is predicting actually running at full speed all but one day and 20 hours, almost two hours where it's not, or two days where it's not running at full speed. It's a huge difference between what we just saw in the ITU um, evaluation, which said it would only be about seven hours not running at full speed. And you also see that it's predicting that the link is going to be completely out for two hours and 37 minutes, which is also a huge difference between just the uh, less than an hour of outage that it was predicting with the ITU 530. So really the point of what I'm gonna try to try to say in this short segment is be careful. Um, a lot of our competitors, and it, right or wrong, I'm not gonna debate that, are defaulting to the ITU 530 method for propagation. We have chosen to default to the Vigance Barnett um, method for propagation analysis. It's a much more conservative analysis, but through our time in the industry, we actually believe it's actually more accurate. And we'd also actually kind of like lean on the more under promise over deliver uh, approach, basically try to set proper expectations so that your expectations are met or exceeded. If you're using the IT530 method, you generally will see that you're going to be uh, maybe disappointed is probably the right word. 
is that what you're predicting is probably not going to come true. It's probably going to get a little bit worse than what you're expecting. So we would generally tell you, you know, you maybe you certainly if you're doing an apples to apples comparison, you want to make sure that you're using the same technique between um, one brand and another brand or one tool and another tool. Make sure, in fact, you are, in fact, looking at exactly the same kinds of kinds of numbers. So that's a that's a primer. I'm sort of skimming the surface here a little bit on this topic. We could probably talk about it for about an hour or so, but I just wanted to bring attention to the fact that number one, we're defaulted to Vigance Barnett. Number two, you could change that in our tool to, to ITU 530 if you wanted. And number three, be careful if you're comparing one tool to another that you've in fact chosen the exact same technique by uh, comparing those. Because you can see in our own tool, the comparison between the two is dramatically different or something like this. All right, well, thanks, Ken. That is a really important information to understand how that works and the uh, differences between those two calculation methods. So uh, thanks for sharing that. We'll make sure that folks, uh, as you're doing your path planning, uh, have, if you're gonna do a comparison from one radio type to another, make sure that the uh, tools that you're using are also set for the same setting. So again, you can see it makes a, a big difference. Well, very good. The next thing we're gonna talk about here is how to align your antennas with WTM and the settings you need to put in the radio during the alignment mode. It'll be different than uh, what settings you're gonna use uh, as the system is up and running. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to toggle over to my radio screen here and we'll take a look at the radio. Okay, here we are. We're looking at the dashboard of the radio. What I'll do is I'm going to scroll down to radio configuration. This is where you set all your parameters uh, for the RF performance of the radio. So prior to trying to aim the antennas, it's going to be important to set the radios up correctly for aiming mode. Uh, if you don't make these changes, what will happen is if the radio is set for adaptive modulation, as you move the antennas and your signal strength goes up and down, the radio is going to try and compensate for that and it's going to shift modulation modes, which means also your RSL or receive signal level is going to vary. So it makes it really difficult to align the antennas. So prior to trying to aim your dishes, you want to log in here. We're going to go to modulation mode and set that for fixed. The next step we're going to do is we've got an option of choosing what modulation. We're going to choose QPSK. That's our lowest modulation. That's the most robust modulation. Um, and when you're trying to do that initial alignment where you're trying to find the other end, you want the signal to be as strong and clear as possible. So we'll go ahead and choose those two parameters. The other thing you would normally do is set your maximum output power to the maximum that the radio is capable of doing. And that varies by frequency band. Here as I hover over, I can see the max is 23.5. So I would turn that to 23.5. Uh, prior to trying to do my alignment. Now I'm set up here in my lab, I don't want to overpower my other radio, so I'm going to leave that uh, power where it is. And what we'll then do is we're going to press the commit button. I'll go ahead and do that. Once we've uh, saved that with the commit button, we'll let this come back, and then I'll show you where you actually go to uh, view the signal strength and the alignment. So now it's saved, we're now running in fixed modulation, we would be set for full power and normal. And you're gonna scroll down and you'll notice under RSL, there's this little blue button here. When I click that, what that does is that puts the uh, receive signal level into instantaneous real time. So you can see the numbers are changing. And that would be as if you're moving those antennas, you can now see uh, exactly what the receive signal level is. So you're gonna um, do one plane at a time. Uh, typically you'll swing back and forth horizontal and you're gonna see several peaks and valleys of the signal. So you're gonna wanna try and find the main beam. Once you've found that, you'll uh, tighten it down, let the other people on the other end of the link do that. And then uh, you're gonna peak it back and forth at least three or four times until you really got on the main beam. Do the same thing both of the vertical and horizontal axis. So when you're done, you can come back and click this blue button, and that will cause the RSL just to update whenever the web page refreshes. So that's our quick tip. Now, once you've got that done, the antennas are locked down, you're gonna to wanna to come back and come back to the same radio config page, and then you're gonna put the radios into adaptive modulation. And normally you're uh, gonna go from QPSK on the minimum all the way up to 4096 qualm. Again, this will be done through the commit button. That'll save it. And then your radios will be up and running in normal operation mode. So that's our uh, tech tip for today. Any closing statements you got, Ken, for our audience? Yeah, you know, there might be one other thing I've seen, especially at 80 gigahertz, you know, folks that have never done alignment in the high, super high frequencies, 
is these beam widths are really, really small. And so if you're, especially if you're shooting longer distances or you can't see the other end, it's incredibly difficult to align. So all these tips that um, Jim just talked about are super important for that. There's an added benefit in that band as well, that if you shrink up the occupied bandwidth, the, the typical setting would be for a 2000 megahertz wide channel that can give you the full capacity. You can narrow that bandwidth down to something like 250 megahertz. I think it's the narrowest channel on that radio. And that'll actually give you a little bit deeper threshold on the radio as well. So that's an added step that you can take. It usually isn't needed on the microwave sides because the bandwidths and the thresholds are not that much different. Um, but in the millimeter wave, it can make a substantial difference in helping you hunt down that initial connection so that once you're initially connected, then you can make the fine alignments between horizontal and the, uh, adjustments on your antenna. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks for that extra tip for sure. So, okay. That sounds good. We're going to wrap up. Uh, this is episode number two of uh, Shop Talk with Jim McKen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care, everybody.